Motorsport TV Live, brought to you by Motorsport Tickets, the dedicated motorsport experiences provider. Hello and welcome to Motorsport TV Live. I'm Rachel Downey bringing you all the latest motorsport news. Rob Huff takes his first win in the World Touring Car Championship in Sochi. The 2022 Dakar route is revealed and Toyota snatched the championship from Honda in Super GT. All those stories and more coming up here on Motorsport TV Live. Rob Huff scored his first World Touring Car Cup victory of the season and the 12th winner in 16 races in a thrilling wet weather finale at Sochi. The Briton came from sixth on the grid to win in his Zengo Motorsport Cupra as two safety car interruptions broke up an incident-filled conclusion to the season. Here is Tom Gamel with the action from race two. Last day of school for the WTCR class and it was Ivan Muller who was making the first of the big mistakes. He took out himself and race leader Mikhail Azcona as the safety car restart got us underway. It was Ladijin who was making a Horlix of turn four and also involved in that melee, Betz Bolditz. Very second-hand looking car there. Two safety cars in the end. Nesta Girolami had his work cut out, holding the field behind. And the battle would rage throughout. Rob Huff would get his knees and elbows out, bat his way to the front and disappear. Six seconds was his advantage come the chequered flag. Once he'd got past Nesta Girolami, Girolami would go backwards. Zengo Motorsport and Rob Huff would go forwards. Jan Erleche with the best seat in the house, watching those battles ahead of him. Jean-Carl Bernay, Attila Tashi, Vervich, they were all in it. But Rob Huff came across the line to beat them all in race two. Earlier in race one, Jan Erleche has secured his second consecutive World Touring Car Cup title with a safe sixth place finish in race one at a sodden Sochi. As Mikhail Azcona came from eighth on the grid and a last lap overtake to take his first win of the season. And sticking with WTCR and the series has revealed its 2022 calendar, including a return to the classic street circuit of Pau in France for the first time since 2009, as well as a return to its traditional Macau season finale. The calendar will expand from eight events in 2021 to 10 events next year, including a three round Asian leg subject to travel restrictions and protocols. The season will begin at most in the Czech Republic in April. The ASO has revealed the complete route for the 44th Dakar Rally that will take place in Saudi Arabia from January the 2nd to the 14th. The rally will commence with a short 19 km prologue in Jeddah on January the 1st that will help determine the starting order for the next day's opening stage in Hail. From there, the rally will head to the first part of the marathon stage, where competitors will be barred from receiving outside assistance from their crews. The second part of the marathon stage will feature a 554km run before competitors leave for the capital city of Riyadh, which will serve as a venue for both the fifth and the sixth stage, as well as a mid-rally rest day. For the second part of the event, the rally will traverse Al Dawadimi, Wada Ad Dawasir and Bisha before returning to Jeddah on the final day. The fourth stage will be the longest in terms of competitive distance with participants clocking 465 kilometers. 
the 2022 Dakar Rally will also double up as the opening round of the new FIA World Cross Country Rally Championship that was announced by ASO earlier this year. The event will also feature on FIM's equivalent series for long distance rallies. Speaking at the launch event, 14-time Dakar winner Stefan Petter Hansel said that he couldn't retire without taking on the challenge in Saudi Arabia with Audi and their new electric buggy. 30 years after my first victory with motorcycle, it was a really good timing to stop. But uh, at the end, I have a proposal from Audi since uh, one year and a half uh, concerning the new project with a new technology and I was really interesting to to be part of this project, I want to I want to see what will be the future of the Dakar with the, 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 the new technology. And this is really a good opportunity to to be probably in the best team for that. So yeah, this is why I decided to continue a little bit more. For sure, this challenge is really higher than all the other challenges. Uh, for sure, sometimes it was for me a motivation to win the first Dakar in, in uh, South America different challenges, but this one is probably the most complicated. To, to try to win the Dakar with electric car, uh, it's really complicated because you know that the Dakar is probably the, the toughest race uh, concerning the conditions, sand, uh, hot temperature, sometimes rivers, so or long distance. On this challenge is, is really complicated, but it's really interesting because before the first testing with a car, I never drove electric uh, cars. And I need to say that I'm really impressed about the possi possibility of the engine. So this is why uh, this challenge is so uh, incredible and it's really a good opportunity for me. It really does look stunning, doesn't it? Now stay with us. We've lots more news from the world of motorsport coming up here on Motorsport TV Live. In a dramatic season finale at the Fuji Speedway, Tom's pair Yuhi Sekiguchi and Shosa Boy in the number 36 Toyota took the victory and snatched the title from Honda as championship leader Naoki Yamamoto was caught in a collision late in the race. Yamamoto had a five point lead going into the race and was running in fourth place in the number one Kunimitsu Honda after teammate Makino started the race. On lap 51 of 66, Yamamoto was taken out by one of the back markers, forcing a pit stop to repair the damage. That put Yamamoto way down the field. Sekiguchi and Suboy, who had gone into the race 16 points down on Yamamoto, were suddenly thrust into a title winning position, with Suboy holding a comfortable lead over the sister car of Hirakawa and Fanestras. Suboy reeled off the remaining laps to seal his first GT500 win. A first for the number 36 side of the Tom's Garage. It was also the team's fifth GT500 crown in total. Johan Christofferson won the first round of the FIA World Rally Cross Championships double header at the Newburgh Green Rat, while championship leader Timmy Hansen was disqualified, trimming his deficit to just four points. Although 2019 champion Hansen could afford to be patient with a 17-point pre-event buffer, he had already seen three points fall by the wayside with fellow Swede Christofferson ending up as top qualifier on Friday, while Hansen ended up fourth. Hansen's day got worse when he was docked five seconds for contact in the second semi-final, which meant he would line up only sixth for the final. Despite visibility problems in the final caused by the low sun, Christofferson avoided trouble and romped to his third win of the season, following previous triumphs in Riga and at Spa Francochamps. And finally, the final round of the Intercontinental GT Challenge scheduled for next month has been postponed in the wake of the latest developments in the COVID pandemic. 
the Kyalami. Nine hours will not take place on its original date of the 4th of December as a result of restrictions imposed on travel to and from South Africa by multiple countries. This follows the detection of a new strain of the coronavirus in the country. According to a joint statement from the SRO and the local promoter, a new date for the event will be announced on Monday. That's all for now. I'm Rachel Downey. Join us again here on Motorsport TV Live for all of the latest news from the world of motorsport. Bye for now.